Hello, I'm Entrilisim and welcome to Let's Play Imperata Rome. So, those of you who don't know what Imperata Rome is, it's a new grand strategy game by Paradox. In the same vein as Hearts of Iron 4, Stellaris, Crusader Kings 2, European Asides 4, although it plays a lot more like the last two. It's basically a grand strategy game set in Roman times. Uh, we're going to dive in. It comes out next week, by the way. And we are going to play as... The loading screens are faster in this one, which is great, but I still have to do this massive pause between we're going to play as Macedon. Uh, Macedon is actually one of the recommended starters as a normal difficulty nation. It's over here. Biggest of the mainland... I think it's the biggest of the mainland Greek states at this time. Uh, it's one of the successor states to Alexander the Great. Uh, if you have a look, we've got through here, Seclud Empire, Egypt. All the stuff going on around here is really the result of Alexander the Great dying about, I think, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, the game start time. So, you'll notice over here, Rome is still a, a pretty small city-state. We have Carthage down here. I was very tempted to play Carthage. I'm not. I'm going to wait, though, until uh, I think this patch 1.1 comes out, because patch 1.1 basically adds a lot more stuff to naval combat. Right now, it's a bit bare bones. So, we'll leave Carthage for now, because they are traditionally a very powerful naval power. Uh, the map actually goes all the way over to India. As you can see, we've got a lot of stuff going on. At some point, it might actually be fun to play as an Indian state, and then just try and go left on the map. But for now... We're going to play as Macedon, and we have Cassander Antipatrid as our leader. We're going to not put mixed gender rules on for now, just because I want to play the default settings to begin with, but in future I probably will put mixed gender rules on. Uh, Iron Man mode off, observe mode off, normal difficulty. Sure, we are, as a, we are a, yeah, words, aristocratic monarchy, a Hellenic religion, and a culture is Macedonian. Sure, let's start. So, uh, firstly, I'm going to try and go a little bit slower through this because it is our very first Let's Play of the game. And I'm going to try and explain a few things as we go. Uh, sometimes decisions, but also like a lot of like the basic game mechanics that I'm uh, with it of. I've played a few versions of the game now. So, firstly, Alexander the Great. In Babylon 18 years ago, the Agid King Alexander died suddenly at the age of 32. Ah, it was 18 years ago. In the five years preceding his death, his continued military successes had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks. His empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The shock of Alexander's early death and his lack of chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by these potentators? Potentators. Potentators. Potatoes. Uh, splintering his empire into elements ruled by potatoes, starred as the Diadoshi. For many years, they and their successors had been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the Empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence into the conflict. The wars of the Diadoshi will surely continue. Perhaps it's up to Macedon to decide how they will end. The die is cast. So, hi, welcome, welcome to your Empire. If you want to find out anything about your Empire, by the way, you can right-click on your Empire. You can right-click on someone else's Empire. And if you want to find out about a specific province, you can left-click. That's... You know, a nice addition. It's still going to take me a lot of time to get used to because every other game by Paradox has been a little bit different. But sure, you know, I'll get used to it eventually. The TLDR on how the basic game economy works is you have a treasury of money. You have manpower. Uh, by economy, I mean things that you have that you trade. I don't necessarily mean just money. But you have, you know, your money. You also have your manpower, which you use to recruit units from, reinforce damage units from. You've got military power, civic power, oratory power, and religious power. These are the four, like, power units you use to spend on things. And you've also then got the three kind of derived things, one of which is stability, which is a measure of how stable your realm is, how um, non-fragmented, how much people believe in it, uh, that sort of thing. You've also got aggressive expansion, which is uh, basically if you expand really quick, people near you are like, whoa, you're dangerous. Like, think early Rome as they expand. Aggressive expansion can have some pretty negative effects. People can actually start, like, making defensive packs around you or maybe even declaring a war on you because they're like, yeah, you're getting too big. And then you've got tyranny. Tyranny is very much the... what happens when Caesar takes control of Rome and just chucks away, you know, any form of government or democracy. Not that they had a really good form of democracy, but you get the point. So tyranny is effectively a thing you will get 
that goes up as you make these tyrannical decisions such as imprison so-and-so because I said so. Having a quick look at a lower level, you'll notice that we've got a army over here, which has seven, seven, seven. That's seven archers, seven heavy infantry, and seven light cavalry. You can see the symbols there. And we've got a fleet of 12 boats here. These are trimarines, yeah. Or triramine. Triramine? I don't know how it's pronounced. I just call them trimarines, but it's definitely not trimarine, because it's not marine, that's remy. Triremi. Sure. Ooh, that's a lot of scorn going on. This is going to be a problem. Anyway, down here, you've got all the Greek city-states. We have Thrace as an ally, which is pretty big. Actually, it's quite nice to have Thrace as an ally. We have Argos and Iboa. You can see them being highlighted down here, here and here. Those are our feudatory states. Basically, they owe their loyalty to us. And we decide what goes on. But they kind of have a little bit of independence. And then we've got a tribute, a tribal vassal, Peonia. They're effectively a load of tribesmen who are like, sure, we'll pay you stuff and whatever. But they don't necessarily have us as their entire liege lord like a feudatory vassal does. It's a little bit different. Now, first things first, we've got a few things up here that are demanding our attention. I'm going to go to omens first because I've got a very... cut. No, sorry. I'm going to go to... Inventions first, because I've got a very cunning plan. This is a technology screen. You have people who influence your technology rate. You are a nine. A nine military. Ooh. I need you doing other things. I don't think we've got particularly good generals as Macedon. So, we're going to just... What have we got? Seven, seven, six. What do we do? Either way, we'll do that later. As these goes up, you get more technology. As they go up to full, you get a new level, and you'll get a bonus. At each level, there are inventions, which, you know, right now we have three, 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 and three of each type. Now, if we spend 100 influence, we can grab one. I'm going to be grabbing aggressive protection. Fabricate claim cost minus 10%. This means that we can fabricate a claim on someone else and be like, actually, we own this land because reason. So we're going to do that. Makes it cheaper to claim, and I'm going to ignore that for the moment. Let's have a quick look. Do we want to put a general on here? Ah, uh, you're seven. That's not bad. Uncaring. Low to gain chance decrease. Disciplined. Ooh. Corrupt. Cruel. Interesting. So, uh, we need to put a general in charge of this army. It'll give them bonuses depending on how high their martial score is. As you can see, we've got six plus one for seven. Uh, plus one because of disciplined, which is nice. I'm definitely putting Ectomos Prepelod. Eki is going in charge of this because, yeah, plus five percent discipline is basically like attack. So plus five percent attack is nice. This is a big army. Definitely going to put you in charge of it. Also, by the way, we have Prominence, which is effectively the chance of them to become the next ruler. Or how much they are liked by people to do that. Popularity, which is how much the people like them. Loyalty, which is how much they're loyal to us. Low loyalty can be very dangerous. And Corruption. The higher Corruption, the more likely that dodgy stuff is going to go on, and the more money that goes through their hands that you will not end up seeing. So if you have them as the governor, Corruption takes away from the money you receive. We do put them in charge of the army. They're a pretty decent general. Also, the negative loyalty chance of, uh, they've got. What's it? Um, uncaring, yeah. The way loyalty chance works is that when you put a general in charge of an army, the army over time will become loyal to the general rather than to you. So, rotating people out helps. Uh, trying to do a few other things like... Rewarding the army directly from your coffers as opposed to worrying about the general helps as well. Uh, if we actually click on you, I think we can reward veterans. There you go. Basically stops them being loyal. That's effectively what Caesar had. When Caesar was over in Gaul, killing all the Gauls, capturing all the land, the army was basically loyal to Caesar. And then he marches down, crosses the Rubicon, gets into Rome and takes power with his army, not the army of Rome, because they were loyal to him. So... 
The people that get disloyal and have a lot of army who support them is dangerous. That's why having the uncaring modifier is actually a good thing. You'll notice that if we mouse over it, uncaring loyalty gain chance minus 0.02. It's green. That's good. Loyalty gain chance is the loyalty of the troops. So the troops are not going to be loyal to him or less likely to. Now, we probably want to start actually by declaring a war pretty early on. So having a look at you, you've got an alliance of Epirus, which is here. You've got a tribal vassal here. And you just have that alliance. Okay. You've got 12 cohorts. You've got six. You've got eight. We could probably take you on. So we're going to go covert action and we're going to go fabricate claim, which is going to cost us, you know, 10% less, which is great, but it's still going to cost us an oratory power. So let's fabricate a claim versus you. And we can't declare war until October 31st. Now, the reason I chose you over this side is because you're my tributary. Thrace is my ally. And then down below, we have Boatia, who's actually allied to Phrygia. I do not want to get into a war with Phrygia. They're actually probably the most successful of the successor states right now from Alexander the Great. And that doesn't sound like a good early war to me. A good early war is something where you get something that's valuable, yet doesn't lose you too many resources. It doesn't require a large investment. All right. Now, up the top here, unused trade routes into capital. This is probably the last major mechanic we're going to talk about before we get into the game a proper. We have all these things up here. These are trade stuffs. The way this works is that you have a couple of important things. If you have a trade stuff, you get a bonus. If you have a surplus of a trade stuff in the capital, you get a bonus. If you are exporting a trade stuff, you get a bonus. Now, whatever that bonus is changes depending on the thing. If you ever look at glass, you'll see all provinces in the province of Macedonia have the following benefit. Commerce income plus 15%. Pella has two additional glass, giving it the following benefit. Commerce income plus 10%. As this is the capital, the following benefits apply to the entire country. Religious tech investment plus 5%. So there are effectively four levels of it, I think. Importing, surplus, having, and capital. Now... We do actually have a lot of excess here that we could export. So people might offer us to be like, hey, you've got excess grain. Can we take it away from you? What we want to do is just go to our trade routes, though, because we've got two trade routes. The number of trade routes you have, by the way, is dependent on the number of people in the province. Uh, when do we get the next trade route? Is it 40 people? Oh, I can't remember when the next trade route is. Base plus one, regional power. Oh, it might be it might be technology that we get it. It might be like an invention. So we're going to use this other trade route. Right now, we probably want to grab something... Maybe something military related? Wild game. Uh, we have horses and stuff, so yeah. Wild game. Surplus in the capital? Nope. Exporting? Nope. Surplus in province? No. We just want to look at the top one. What happens when we have it? Local tribesmen output plus 10%. Yeah, not really important for us. I don't think we have any tribesmen, do we? Yeah. We're a very advanced culture for this age. We have citizens. We have freemen. And we have slaves. We, you know, advanced is relative. We could go for stone. Local fort defense. Leather. Recruit speed. Vegetables. Supply limit. Salt. Starting experience with furs is pretty tempting. Hemp, maybe. We've also got like local tax. Research points, local tax. Local tax 20% with gemstones is actually really good. Papyrus, research points. Again, research points would be great. 20% research is a solid pick there. I'm quite tempted to go for that. You know what? Let's not go military. Let's go for the papyrus. 20% research points is just too good. And we'll import it from Egypt. Yeah. Ionia or three choices of Egypt. We'll go from Memphis. Why not? 
It will also earn us a little bit of money. Trading is good for everyone. It's good for you importing. It's also really good for someone who's ex exporting. They earn, I think, like double the amount off the top of my head. What else have we got? Uh, our navy needs someone to be in charge of it. Alexander and Tupatrid, he is a pretender. So a pretender is someone who is in line for the throne, but isn't the next person in line. So you'll see that he's a 16-year-old son. If we scroll down, we'll probably see... No? Another anti Petrids? Oh, okay. Well, there is someone related to you who's older. Preferred heir, Alexander and Tupatrid. Wait, we've got two Alexander and Tupatrid. That's not going to get confusing. God damn it. Uh, he's also got popularity. So his promise is 30. His popularity is 70. His loyalty is 70. His corruption is zero. Mm, he's quite popular. And he's got some prominence. Oh, you've got prominence. You're not even my family. You're the head of a different family. Damn. Oh, wait. Preferred heir. That means your preferred heir. Right, your preferred heir is you. That makes sense. Your preferred heir is Philippa the... Philip the fourth Antipatrid. It might be Philip who's my preferred then. We will put... We'll put you in charge of the Navy, because if you die, it happens. Omen. Now, omens are a religious thing. Basically, every so often... It changes how long they last for. If we have a look, it's currently uh, 1,825 days. You can have technologies and inventions that kind of extend that. But they will give you a bonus. It can be stuff like aggress expansion decays quicker. It can be your commerce goes up, national unrest, population, tax, research points, manpower. We're going to go for discipline because we're going into a fight. Discipline 5.7% is good. That's straight up attack. So we're going to grab Blessing of Ares. And now this last one is... Scorned families. This is something you'll see occasionally. Sometimes you don't have to deal much with it. Like, you could just leave it. But a family will be scorned unless the total income of its members receives from jobs and offices at least 2% of our national income. Basically, a powerful family wants to be powerful. If you don't give them a role, they will get pissed off. Families where everyone holds a job or no members can hold a job will not be scorned. So, the Karsid and the Kalistarid families are somewhat annoyed. Now, we could replace you. Oh, I need to leave you because uh, I only just placed you. I can only rotate you every year. Fine. What we'll do is we will create a new unit here. We're going to separate off a light cavalry. And then we're going to recruit people to go for this unit. And what families is it? It's the Casted and the Calistrid family. Oh, they're not great. You're brave, though. Ralevine plus 5%. Loyalty chance increases, though. Ah, people like you. Ugh. Yeah, I really don't want to give you a job, because you're... Hmm. You support Philip IV. I think that's our heir. Yeah, it is. I'm going to put you in charge. I know you're three less than this guy. But you're corrupt. So that will hopefully let you be less scorned. I think being a commander cancels the job. Anyway, recruit to army. We're going to recruit some different units. Now, if you look here, we've got five different choices for what we can do. This varies depending on what you have. Like, you need metal to make heavy infantry. You need horses to do, obviously, cavalry. You need elephants to make war elephants. We don't have any. Elephants are somewhat not native to Greece. They also have different effects depending on who they're attacking. Like, heavy cavalry are amazing versus archers, plus 50%. But they are terrible versus war elephants. Light cavalry, similar, but not quite as good versus archers. Terrible versus war elephants, and terrible versus heavy infantry. We're going to just grab, I think, one, two, three, four archers. One, two, three horses. And one, two, three, four heavy infantry might get a few more as time goes by. And then you, we're going to march ready for war over here. Okay. 
Note that you can see a supply limit here. It says supply limit 24. Weight with first stratos 22. So we're below the 24, so we take no attrition. If you take attrition, you're basically having people die because you don't have enough supply there. Uh, and I'm going to get you to march to... Here. Okay. Hmm. Let's unpause. You know, unpause up here, or I can just press spacebar. Now on the 31st, we're going to war. You're also in a defensive league. Okay. Oh, wait. We've got to wait until 1st November. There we go. Declare war. And we could call in Thrice. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna just hold back on that. I'm going to try and do it by myself. So we're going to take Epericus, which is selected. We could go show superiority, but we want to take Epericus because that's effectively what we want to do. We want to take the land. We could call Thrace in. Uh, yep, it's just Calistrad who's now complaining, or Calistrad did. The other person's happy. And we're going to try and march to here. Now, here is the capital. It's also got a fort. Forts stop you marching past them. Like, if we would say march... Right, say we're attacking our travel vessel here. This fort stops us marching through anything touching it. So if we were to hit here, we couldn't march to there. We'd have to march to that fort and then take that fort. If we would attack here, we could. But we wouldn't be able to go here and then into there. Because that fort would block us. So... We're going to go and siege down this fort and take it for ourselves. It's also the capital, so works for me. You, we could go south and try and attack here, but I'm going to try and keep my army united. At least for now. I'm actually going to leave you here. Now notice this skull, we're actually taking attrition. Because we're marching through pretty dodgy areas. This mountainous terrain around here is not going to be good for us. When we get there... We're going to start taking attrition, so we're probably going to split our army in half, but we can deal with that when we get there. Oh, enemy army, 3k. It's three archers. The Wars of the Daidochi. Having built the largest empire the world has ever seen, Alexander the Great died suddenly 10 years ago. Wait, didn't it say 18? Before? With no clear successor to his empire, his generals, the Diadoshi, or successors have fought over Alexander's spoils. Our ruler, Cassander of Macedon, is the son of Antipater, who was the most senior of Alexander's generals and was given the honor to guard his heirs until they came of age. Upon the death of his father, Cassander killed his appointed regent with the help from his father's enemies. He then proceeded to kill the heirs and their mothers. Oh! Oh, wow! Okay. Antigonus, the former satrap of Furia, is perhaps the most successful of the successors. Antigonus has also meddled in the Greek states and controls the fortress of Chalcis, that was once ours. But success breeds enemies and he now stands alone and vulnerable. Ooh. We get a lot of claims. Interesting. Okay. Carry on. Maybe we didn't need that claim. I don't know. Oh, unpause. Yep, there we go. That's the thing I should do. Yeah, they're recruiting archers. Now, no, I can't actually march to there. I can march to here, but only by coming back at it, because this fort is stopping me. So, yeah, I'm going to march our 20k in there, and then we're probably going to have to cut you in half. Actually, we could just cut you in half here, because I don't want to take the attrition. Supply limit is 11. And we'll put uh, you in charge. Fine. Fine. Hopefully that'll stop you being scorned. If they're scorned, they start to get disloyal and pissy with you, and then problems arise. Uh, we also want to change your shock action tactic to something else. This is something you've always got to remember, and you will probably forget, because I do, which is 
This is the tactic. Currently, shock action is giving us a 30% effectiveness. Because, well, it's all about light cavalry and archers and heavy infantry. Eh, we have down here light cavalry. Oh, sorry, it's all about something that we don't have. What is it about? Heavy cavalry, heavy infantry, and war elephants. Oh, yeah, the default is about war elephants. That's not going to help. Basically, 0% bonus for archers, 0% for light cavalry, 30% for infantry, heavy infantry. That's not... no. Phalanx, though, we get a 30% bonus on our heavy infantry, 22% on our light cavalry, 0 on our archers. Or we could go bottleneck, which is pretty similar. Bottleneck has bonuses versus hit and run and shock action. Phalanx has benefits versus cavalry skirmish and shock action. I'm going to go bottleneck just because shock is probably something they might try on us. You can go phalanx because you're 62 actually. And you can go... Ooh, 27? You're waiting for the heavy, cow the heavy infantry to join up though. Not 27, sorry. 75%. 75% is crazy. Uh, you're going to get heavy infantry though. So we'll go for phalanx. And I'm going to try and march you down here. We actually will go south. Oh, hello. Imminent battle. Very likely we'll win. Okay, so we've hit the battlefield. We have almost 10k. They have 4k. We're very likely to crush them here. But our bottleneck is actually getting a negative because they have something that defeats it. We won. We killed 4,000 of the troops because... They were marching and only pretty fresh, and we've captured someone that... Yeah, we're doing well. That's a good initiation. They're still marching north, though. Uh, oh, dear. We're going to have to deal with this in a second. So, currently, this is our siege. The way the sieges work is that this bar will fill up over time. When it gets to the full, there is a chance we take the province. Equal to minus 35%. That's a fort there. It's defended. When it gets full, it'll go back to the start, and there'll be a better chance. And it'll go full... Back to the start, better chance. So the first few times it ticks up, it's going to be a negative percent. We're not going to get the province. Over here, however, no defenses. The first time this ticks up, 100% chance to get the province. It's pretty simple. What do we have up here? Pretender support. The following people support one of the pretenders. Okay. You belong to a different nation. Could do a lot of things like I could execute you could flog you but you know what I'm not gonna deal with that like you're a prisoner I can deal with that some other time call allies not gonna bother invention what do we want technology speed 5% yeah let's add all those technology bonuses on Now, we're still taking some attrition here, but that's just the uh, attrition before modifier zero, under siege plus one. So we're taking the 1% attrition because when you're sieging, you always get 1% attrition minimum. And yeah, I think we'll march you around here. Renovations. Upolmos Upolmosid in his civic capacity informs us that an opportunity has arisen. One of our most valued temples is in the dire need of renovation. With enough investment, the building could become a shining beacon of our benevolence and architectural prowess. We give him almost 80 uh, money. I'm going to call it denarii. Denarii is the money of Rome. We get prestige. Uh, sorry, our family gets prestige. We get popularity. He gains 25 prestige and he's coming to zero. Or we've no need. Um, I'm going to say yes. We could do with a, like a popularity buff at the beginning of the game. 
Okay, we cost about our money though. We are losing. So we've got to win this war. Oh, we've gained trusting, which is interesting considering that we basically screwed over everyone and killed them. Totally trustworthy. Alright, I actually forgot to group you up with G. Or you can press the group up button up here. Oh, there was a battle. Ah, we must have crushed a, a unit of archers. Yes, we did. And we captured another member of the family. Huh. Ah, here we go. An envoy from the Hellenistic Regional Power Thrace is requesting import glass from province of Macedonia. We're not currently exporting it. We would gain the following benefit. We would gain the benefit from exporting, remember. Research points, 5%. This will also earn us 0.61 denarii. I might also call them ducats because that's a U4. I'll accept that. What are you made of? Ooh. Heavy infantry. If you're good at heavy infantry, you're probably running phalanx or bottleneck. What works against phalanx or bottleneck? Um, shock action, funny enough. Oh, it's terrible. Okay. Mm. You know what? I'm just going to run phalanx. It's fine. Now, this 21 here isn't actually them. That's mercenaries who are sitting there. They aren't, they aren't actually bought yet. We should also take the navy over here. I mean, it's easier to siege provinces of uh, a port. Right now you've got a port and that means you're going to survive longer. The navy will help with that. Where did that army go? Must have marched north. Yeah, there they are. They avoided our army. Oh. Yep, there's a 12k chasing us. The Roman local power of Macca folded. They've uh, folded the threat of war from the Hellenistic major power of Seclude Empire and gave them the city. Basically, the Seclude Empire must have been like, we will go to war if you don't give us this. And they just gave them the city. I don't think we want to take this fight because that 12 is going to come kill us. So I think we want to just run away. Let them keep trying to take provinces over here while we actually take a, a proper province from them. But this will mean that they'll actually have divided us and they do outnumber this 10k. Oh, hello. We got into a fight with some pirates. Ooh, damn. They've got really nice positioning. A son has been born to Cassander Antipatrid. Ooh. Philippos Antipatrid. He is a member of the Basilius of Macedon. Uh, the head of our country is called the Basilius. Like Twenty percent chance to take that now. We killed them all. We lost no ships. Great. They're marching back now. They're getting their armies together. That's worrying. Uh, yeah, we might want to try and get our navy up here quick. Okay, come back and stick close. You know what? I'm going to call Thrace in. Oh, you can't call after 12 months after it started. Well, that's going to be fun then. Please take it this time. 42% chance. Nope. And we're being attacked. At least they're sending 7 versus our 10. And their 12 is moving the other direction. And, aha, they're using shock and our bottleneck is helping. 
Yeah, they're getting crushed. We lost a thousand, they lost almost four thousand. Yeah, they're pure light infantry, that's why. It's annoying we don't have a fort around here. That's something we could build later. Ah, we captured it. Sweet. And we captured a population and distributed it as slaves. Nice. Yeah, I think we're going to try and deal with their army now. Try and capture you in a pincer. Kokuria is asking for olives. We're not exporting it. It would give us slave happiness and half a denarii, except. We're not currently exporting it. We gain national manpower and 0.61. Except. Oh, hello. That 16k is moving. Now, now that we've started to take all this, this is because we've got the capital. If you get the capital, things around it siege out. Just over time. Uh, we're not currently exporting it. We'd get our maintenance reduction and we'd get money. Except that's going to help. But we're still going to start having issues in a year's time. Okay. We're not currently exporting light infantry defense plus 5%. Money. Okay. We're not currently exporting... Uh, what's this? Fish. Sure. We're not currently exporting... Livestock. Sure. That's a lot of good money right there. Question of competence. After weeks of looking nervous and smiling at court, the whispers circling in the palace have finally reached the ears of Belisidius. It seems that someone has been spreading rumors and spinning yarns of his unequal profligacy and unfitness for the throne. Ooh. I... 50% chance I gain forgiving and we lose 15 popularity. Or... We gain Vengeful, Investigation will be, and we get Popularity. You know what? No one can freely insult the Basilius. Let's start the Investigation. Yeah, that's what happens when someone starts spreading rumors around you. Ah, they took one of my pro- No. See, he's still going. Uh-oh. Yep, looks like they're going to try and take us here. Who's going to get there in time? I think they are. It says we'll arrive 23rd. 26th. Yeah, they're going to catch us. I'm going to run. We lost 2,000. They lost 1,000. There's worse outcomes. I have to back away now, though. The traitor stake who demean the name of Kassan Antipatris has been identified as another than Antipater Antipatris who quickly confessed to his crimes. Pretender. Oh, his loyalty is less than 60. Forget him. His reputation is ruined. He loses 40 loyalty. Oh, God. He loses prominence. He loses popularity. Pardon him. Because we've got forgiving, we can pardon him and become friends with him. Ooh. Perhaps he can be won over. Give him money. Gain corruption. You know what? Pardon him. He learned his lesson. Sue for peace. Um, no, I'm not going to sue for peace yet. I want to get your capital. I'm going to consolidate the cohorts, which means we'll lose some, but
but we'll mix ones that are damaged together. And then we will recruit to army. One, two, three. One, two. Oh crap, I don't have the money for that. We'll to recruit two then. Where are you going? Elima? Yeah, going here. All right, killed a thousand there. You're still marching. Great. I'm going to chase you down. Also, we need to deal with this horrific morale situation. Yeah, it'll take a few months to recover that. Oh, one of our generals supports someone else. That's not allowed. Come on, once we capture this, I'll be very happy. See what they do. They're going south. We go south then. And we're not currently exporting it. We gain citizen promotion cost decrease in money. Sure. Hello. They look like they want to take a fight here. Oh, it's going to be a, a risky fight. Can we put a better general in charge? Yeah, you go in charge. Yeah, we've got a better army. Also, make sure you're on a decent tactic. They're only wielding light infantry. I don't really think we've got to worry about this. Yeah. You know what? We'll go bottleneck. The archer bonus is good. Archers are good against light infantry. I'm going to group you together into one army. I'm going to march. We're going to go for that war. We won that battle. We lost a fair few troops, but we did win it. They've got a lot of archers. Now I'm not suing for PC yet. I want the city. Invention. Uh, ooh. I'm in morale recovery 2%. Yeah. Also, we'll bring you down here to help with the siege. I really should have done that. Are we locked into that decision now? We are. This fight's going to happen. Oh, we're winning. Slowly. 
Yeah, our heavy cavalry are really helping. Oh, no, sorry. Our light cavalry are really helping versus the archers. We won. We lost almost 5,000. They lost 8,000. I think this is where we split. No, we can't split. I'm going to uh, detach siege. That's basically dropping enough people off that they can re-siege that problem and get it back for us. Do the same here. I'm going to keep marching, trying to keep up with their army. We would, this would remove our capital surplus. Right, we're not accepting this because we want that surplus. We'd lose the 5% reduction on uh, upkeep, which I really want. This keeps going. Ah, you're going to this capital. Excellent. We'll be taking the fight then. Hi. Smash, smash, smash. Great. And I think we'll just siege that province down as well. Oh, and we won the siege. Things around it are going to start sieging out. I wonder. We might be able to get the war now. Sue for peace. And money. They would accept that, I think. Yeah, we'll take all the money. And we'll take both of these. Excellent. Right. The Taulantian elite. After protracted conquest, we finally routed the Taulantian armies and laid waste to their lands. During the second the capital, many important prisons were taken, many of them having held important positions. Now the language in our dungeons are waiting wherever fate we decide to impose on them. They deserve no quarter. Kill them! We gain popularity. Banish those of class and put the rest of the sword. We lose aggressive expansion, which we just gained 12, so that's fair. Imprison their leaders, let the rest disappear. Uh, we imprison them, we lose three popularity. Pass judgment on each family in turn. I think we're just going to straight up accept the aggressive expansion reduction because we need to reduce that. Because we're over the worrying section of like, if you start going over 10, be a little bit worried. If it goes over 50, then yeah. There we go. And we have ourselves a much bigger nation. Although, apparently, that's still sieged by someone. I think that'll unsiege itself as soon as we unpause. But for now, we're going to end this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have, like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. Let me know um, if you want me to cover more of the game, obviously, in the comments down below. But also let me know if you like the way I'm kind of also tutorializing as I go through and explaining every section in detail. I know it's a new game, so I kind of want people to be able to at least pick up some stuff as we go in. Especially since this is coming out a week before the game comes out, you might actually be able to just dive into the game when you get it. And then hopefully go from there. Uh, so, yeah. Let me know if you like this format. Uh, if you prefer me to just straight up let's play it and just talk about my deck as like I normally do rather than focusing on the tutorial aspects. Feel free. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. It is really useful feedback, so yeah, actually do let me know. And like and so on. It's already good feedback to basically be like, do you want me to cover the game more? But until next time, I've been at Elysium. This has been Imperial of Rome. Stay shiny. <laughs>